Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flight Deck. Today with the configuration behind this Boeing 737 gear lever. Before we get lost deep in the configuration menus, I want to say thank you to those of you who shared their experiences in the comment section of my last video. I have made my dust cover here from 3D printed TPU, which works really great for me because it has the exact measurement that I need and all the holes are in exact the places where they should be. But before that I made some researches which materials I could use and I thought about something like artificial leather or something like this but I never came across that what you wrote in the comment section. So some of you wrote me that they have made their dust covers from old bicycle tubes. Yeah, sometimes it's so simple. So thank you to those of you and to all the others. If you can bring in some good ideas, then feel free to leave a comment under these videos. Everyone else can learn from your experiences. Let's have a look to the corresponding section of the configuration sheet. You can download this file for free from my website if you want to look up how I have made my configurations here. There are not much components in here. We have six LEDs, red and green ones, four buttons, three of them for the three positions of the gear handle, and one button for the electrical solution of the lock override trigger. And finally, a servo motor. Like always, we have to make the configurations into programs in ProSim and in MobiFlight. And let's start with ProSim and have a look where we can find the configurations that we need here. As always, you start here in the config and configuration menu and in the combined config tab. And I can recommend you to use the search function, type in gear, and you will find all the things you need for this panel here. And believe me, this method will help you not to forget any configuration because they are spread over some categories here. Of course, the most of them you can find here in the landing gear section. And here we have the switches, or in our case, the buttons, gear off, down and up that I'm using and the indicators for the gears. But we will also need the manual override button and this we find here in the MIP section on the switches. There it is, the handle lock override and the mechanism that blocks the handle when the plane is on the ground. This can be found here in the Michelangelo's tab and there under gates we have the gear handle release solenoid and this configuration I'm using later in MobiFlight to control the servo motor. And here we are, I just mentioned it, the MobiFlight configuration. I created some out and input configurations, but let's have a look to the MobiFlight modules first and there we'll see uh, maybe a surprise for you. All the devices that I have to declare here is just this here, N64, which is the servo motor. I don't need to define any additional devices for this panel. Why? Let's have a look at the configuration sheet again. Those of you who have watched my previous videos will know this. Here you can see in front of the LEDs and buttons some namings. And these are shift registers, output shift registers for the LEDs. And for the buttons, I'm using input multiplexers. And with these registers and multiplexers, I can control many devices with just some pins of the Arduino and without declaring any additional MobiFlight devices here. So up here you can see there is the output shift register number three which I have defined here 
And further up here, we find the input multiplexer four, which is part of two uh, input multiplexers that are connected here to the Arduino N. And the multiplexer number three is the main multiplexer. And here you can find the configuration. But I have mentioned this all more in details in previous videos. So here, only for you again, I'm using registers and multiplexers. This is making the configuration much more easier. I don't want to go into every detail here. I think when you have followed me along, you know most of the techniques here. Just an example, in the output configuration tab, we can have a look here to an LED. I've inserted the offset here, the bit of the offset that I'm using for the data transfer. And in the display tab, I've chosen the output shift register, uh, which is controlling this LED and the pin of the register where this LED is connected to. And this is all you have to do for all the different LEDs. A similar technique for the buttons. Let's have a look to the N61 configuration, which is the gear up state. Here you choose the device and the first tab here, the input tab, I've chosen the input multiplexer number four. And at the input four of this multiplexer, there is this button connected to. I'm again using an offset and the bit where I'm transferring the data. And I have defined an on press state, which sets the value to one. So the button is pressed and the on release date, which uses the same offset and sets the value to zero. And this is all you have to do for the different buttons here. The gate that we have seen in the prosim configuration before, which controls if the gear handle is locked or free for you to move, this is controlled in the N64 configuration here, which is the servo motor configuration. Like all the other configurations, this has an offset declared here. And I only use one bit of the offset to control the servo motor. So different from all other configurations that I've done where you control a servo motor with a complete offset, you only need one signal on or off to control the servo motor. I will come to this in a while, and then you will understand why this is working here. But if you use a different bit here, than the zero bit, then you have to modify the value that uh, comes over here into MobiFlight. Because here you have only one or zero when you use the zero bit. When you use the one bit, your value can be zero or two. And to control my servo motor, I will use a clear on or off signal. So zero or one. And to make a clear on or off signal from a two value that comes over from um, FSU IPC, I'm using here the modify tab. And I have made a modifier in detail, a comparison. And this is a really simple comparison. If my current value that comes in here is bigger than zero, then set this value to one. Otherwise, set it to zero. And so when the value two comes in from FSU IPC, it is bigger than zero. And so the two is modified into a one. Otherwise, it is a zero. And so I have a clear on or off zero or one to control my servo motor. And the servo motor is controlled here in the display tab. There is the uh, servo motor, the N64. And there are only two values that the servo motor is looking at a zero and the maximum value is the one. And so the maximum rotation he's doing when he is becoming the one value. And how much does he need to rotate 
to uh, let the handle run free again. And this you have to estimate. Just enter here uh, the value one, pressing test, and insert a percentage number. And in my case, I have found out that when my servo motor turns 40%, then um, it is in the perfect position that the handle can uh, pass here. And so in this case, when the one comes in, the servo motor rotates 40%. And when the zero comes, it rotates back and locks the handle again. So this is already all the configuration you have to do in Mobi Flight. Let's have a more detailed look now to the hardware and some changes I have made. And then let's make some tests. Here you can see the mechanism more in detail. The axis of the handle is locked by this wheel here. It can be moved up here. The axis of the wheel sits directly in the pulling direction of the handle so that it can resist the pulling force of the handle, uh, I hope, in an optimum way. When the mechanism opens now, the wheel turns and the way is free for the handle to move into another position. There. And when it comes back, then it should close again. And the value of this rotation here is a value that I have mentioned before, which you have to estimate and test out how much your servo motor has to move. When you assemble this whole thing, then I have found out that it can be more easy to install the servo motor at a later step. So just press it in into the hole where it, it should sit, but don't glue it in place already. Move um, the wheels into the position where they should be and also the gear shaft here. And when everything is in the optimal close position, then install your servo motor in place. And one thing I have changed too is the installation of these three tactile switches here. I have glued them in place at the beginning, but this came loose. So hot glue is really cool to come loose again on such surfaces here. This can come in very handy, but in this case it didn't. And so I have drilled through these tactile switches with a two millimeter drill and installed brass shafts here of a length of 12 millimeter. Super glued them into the acrylic and then push the switches over and fix them with hot glue so that I can uninstall them if this is necessary in the future. The holes for these shafts are not in my downloadable files and this is because I was afraid that there can be differences in switches that I use or you use and then the holes will be useless for you. So do it as I have done, just bring the switch in a position so that this roller is on the line of these roundings here, hold it in place and drill them through and you are ready to go. Let's start with the tests on the ground, some light tests and the locking override mechanism. I have MobiFlight running and ProSim and prepared in the background. The plane is on the ground. You can see the three lights for the gear down are already illuminated like they should be. We can check um, this here in ProSim 2 and make some tests for the red lights, so the gear left transit. You can see this will work too. The nose gear, there it is. And the right gear transit. I think we'll see them later when we use the handle. And now test the override function here. So it's a little bit difficult to pull this trigger, but I think this should be difficult. So there are these uh, guards here for. I will pull the trigger and then the handle should be unlocked. So getting my finger in here and pull the trigger. And there you can see the servo motor unlocks the handle. I could move the handle now if I wanted to, 
And when I release uh, the trigger, it goes back into position. Keep in mind, I think in the real Boeing, this is a hardware feature, but in my case, I have um, realized this in an electrical way. So now the final test, I've put my joystick on the table here. I'm on the runway with a plane. ProSim and MobiFlight are running in the background. You can't see this. Um, but you can see the lights are already illuminated. The gears are on the ground. What I will do now is giving thrust, try to get this plane in the air, just really dirty. And when the wheels are leaving the ground, then the servo motor should unlock the handle so that I can bring the handle to the up position, which I will do. And we will see, hopefully, that uh, the gears go in or at least we will see um, the lights illuminating and then extinguish. So let's make this test. Release the brakes, giving trust. Oh, this will be way better in the finished simulator. Oh, I can't wait to make this in the full-size cockpit. Okay, 100 knots. So, 150, let's try to bring this beast into the air. Yep. Yeah. There, the handle is unlocked now. So let's bring it in a stable position, just dirty. So, and now move the handle to the up position. You can see the lights are um, lighting up. So the red ones, gears are in and locked. So handle is off. And now last test here bring the gear out again. The gears are in transit. And all gears are down. Test complete. Yes, a successful test and another part will find its way into the cockpit. As I said before, the configuration sheet can be found for free in the download section and for those of you who want to build such a handle at home you will find a download package with all the needed files to cut out, engrave and 3D print all the needed files for this handle in the member section of my website. Some last steps for the MIP to do and if you don't want to miss these upcoming episodes, then subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. And I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.